is how to turn outrage, pain into profit. And when I say profit, I'm not talking necessarily cash. Joy is a form of profit. Peace of mind is a form of profit. Profit is anything that is above and beyond what you had before. It's just not cash when I use that word in those terms. So I looked at this case and it pretty much went the way I thought it would because if you haven't noticed, many bad outcomes come in Florida, in the judicial system. If they're going to let a woman kill her baby and get off scot-free, Zimmerman was just biding his time. But with this outrage, and I saw it on my Facebook page, and I saw it over the place, and I saw tweets from athletes, and people are pissed off. They are truly pissed off. They're hurt. My question is, what are you going to do with the outrage and pain? In 99.8% of the cases, absolutely nothing. That's what's going to happen. Absolutely nothing. I saw some of my friends saying things that weren't true. There's a total war on black men. At one point, there was true. There was a war on the black community. But the thing is, there's a war on every American in the United States of America that isn't aware of what's going on and isn't extremely wealthy pretty much if you are average average income average intellect average station in life there's a war on your way of life and it's not a white thing it's not a black thing it's not a green thing it's not a hispanic thing it's an american thing i did a video recently the new lower class educated and poor educated and poorly paid or unemployed i did that weeks ago This thing is bigger than a black and white issue. And I look at it and I was like, hmm, people aren't thinking. Why? Because of the sheep, because of the bah effect. But those of you who are here are a little brighter than that and you're more forward and progressive thinking. So when you have some outrage, when you have pain in your life, you have a choice to take that fuel because there is nothing wrong with having outrage. There's nothing wrong with having pain. There's nothing wrong with being pissed off. These are natural, raw emotions that you're perfectly entitled to have. There's nothing wrong with that. My problem with people who have these emotions is they don't do anything constructive with them. It's either nothing happens or it's destructive. Recently, I've had an issue this year. You know, I think some of you know, but I'll tell it to you. I got arrested in 2008. Now, I've been waiting for someone to say the wrong thing so I could sue them because, you know, as with the theme of this video, how to turn profit, pain and outrage into profit. I got arrested. I was going home from one Saturday night, actually a pretty good Saturday night. We did really well sales wise. I got pulled over by the Cab County Police, and the next thing you know, my steering wheel's in the chest. I mean, my chest is in the steering wheel, and I'm in the back of the cop car. And I'm just like, because when he got behind me, and that, that's another issue, I don't even know why he stopped me. Probably racial profiling. But even with that, my car was insured. I was straight. My license was straight. So I was just like, okay, I'm going to tell this guy to fuck off because I was tired. And I've actually done that to cops before. I know it sounds strange, but I've yelled at cops and gotten away with it. Once again, shit is not the same. So I get arrested, and this is where the weird thing happens. The cops can't tell me why I'm arrested. It's just there's a warrant for the city of Stone Mountain for your arrest. It's like, I haven't been in Stone Mountain in two years. We used to have a store there, but I don't go to that place because it's one fucked up place. And, you know, go to jail. Go to jail, and then some lady calls me up, and it's like, yeah, your bond's like 1250 bucks. I had $1,400 on me. Okay, fine. Oh, you can't pay us. You have to pay the city of Stone Mountain. I was like, well, how can... Call my partner, and she said, well, they're supposed to. If you, you, know, you have someone that can find one of their officers, they'll take the bond, they'll call us, and we'll let you go. I said, all right. So I called my partner, who had the money. She found the officer. He wouldn't take the payment. So, 
I spent two days in jail for something I didn't know what I did. I, I had no outstanding tickets or nothing. Didn't know. Six weeks later, uh, oh, before I go on with that, remember I had fourteen hundred bucks. They take out, they take everything when you go to jail. Now this is my first time going to jail. Whole life did everything right to avoid going to jail, and this is and when we get to the end. You'll see why I was extremely pissed off. I took my money <clears throat> when I left jail. They gave me a check for fourteen hundred bucks. I had to call my boy to come get me, went to the bank. The check bounced. I'm not kidding. I had to go back to the jail. I was like, look, you took my cash money. I want my money. So another hour later, they do something. I go back to the bank to cash the check. So I had to go get my car out of impound, which is $150. I made sure to let the officers know that, hey, someone knows that my laptop and my camera, all of my hustling you know, electronic stuff was in the trunk in my computer bag. And that was there. Got my car, 150 bucks out of the impound. Six weeks later, go to court. I am in the kangaroo court. People are getting tickets and fines for parking their car on the right side of the street, but the wrong way. I'm like, what? So we get up there. My partner's next to me. She is actually holding my arm because I am like pissed. Blood pressure's high. And the judge says, so what are you here for? And I said, your honor, that's a great question because I don't know. Then the code enforcement officer comes up and he's like, we're here. Failure to appear. He did not renew his business license. And my partner and I looked at each other. And at the same time, we said, we moved two years ago. The judge looked because I am like seconds from about to choke this fool. He went ahead to an empty storefront and left a citation that triggered a failure to appear warrant for my arrest. The judge immediately, 30 seconds, dismissed it. Looked at the code enforcement officer and told me, well, just make sure you have your forwarding address. And I'm like, and my partner's like, let's just go, let's just go, let's just go. So that's why I have a mugshot online. That's what I got arrested for. So there have been a group of people who have been playing with that because they've done no research. They seem to think I have a prison record or some of this other stuff. And they've been going on and on and on and on. Well, there's one person who's created a fake or a sock pocket YouTube account. And he's been after me and he's been leaving comments, creates a new account. Like, yeah, you know, hey, Glendon, you know, you're haters so much. There's this very explicit, you Google Glendon Cameron and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, dude, really? So one day I was like extremely stressed out, had a lot of stuff going on, family stuff. And they struck again. And I really wanted to respond. I really wanted to get something off my chest. And I have a 24-hour rule. If it's something really egregious online, I just take 24 hours, wait, and, you know, see if I'm going to respond. 99% of the time, I don't respond because it's not worth it. There's no profit in hate. There's no profit in outrage. And there's no profit in being just pissed off. So that day, I had a workout. I went to the workout And I was like, condition your mind, condition your body. And I was pissed. And I used that energy and I deadlifted 455 for the first time in maybe a decade. Hit a squat of 405. Same workout. So I used that energy for something constructive. And I went back home and it even take 24 hours. I deleted the comment and blocked the person because he came, <clears throat> excuse me, he came three to four times in a week. Just same stuff, same stuff. And I, I thought about that. And it made me laugh after I had turned outrage to profit. Here's a person who is spending precious time trying to fuck with me while I am using their energy to make myself better. If you really think about that, and that's one of the reasons I don't really respond the way that I used to on YouTube, because it was a a period of growth that I had to undergo, because you really don't get a lot of pleasure from, well, you don't get a lot of long-term profit from these emotional outbursts, or what I like to call mental masturbation. And, you know, the person got blocked, and more than likely, they'll create another account, and they'll just keep doing it, because... They don't really understand. I have learned from having five businesses that failed, having four, actually five now that have been successful, that 
regardless of what's going on, if you take energy and you take that energy and you move it in a channel that's going in the direction that you want your life to go, you'll keep going. And I came up with a new product idea, all kinds of stuff. And I really didn't think too much about it until, you know, the verdict came down and I thought I would do this mental Monday. Understand, people are going to come after you. People are going to say stuff. They're going to do stuff. And the thing is, these are some very small people who are captivated by fear and and insecurities and inferiority complexes. Because I want you to think, you're on the street. You're walking and you see some dog droppings. You don't call attention to it. You're repulsed. You're like, oh, who let their dog do that? And what do you do? You keep walking. You don't go out and send a tweet. You don't tell your friends. You don't form online, you know, online digital vigilantes or mobs to point out the fact. You move on with your life. So understand, if someone is pretty much fucking with you, There's something that you are doing that is pushing a tender trigger. You're kicking them in the underbelly some way, somehow, some fashion, and they don't like it. They may not even really be aware of what's going on. All they know is they see you, and it's just like, oh, I can't stand him. I don't like him. No, there's something wrong. And they react, and you've done nothing to this person. That is a sign of of a person with some serious problems. And it took me a while to learn that because coming from the storage auction business of very aggression of winner take all to working online, which is more collaborative and dealing with the landscape, because I will submit to you two years ago, I would have jumped straight in the fray into the fray, knives, swords, banishing lasers on just going for it. And I would have lost money, I would have lost emotional energy, I would have lost self-respect, and I would have lost the most important thing, time. When you engage into this litany, and as I said, people are going on about the Martin case, and the grand question at the end of the day, what are you going to do with that outrage? And if the answer is nothing, then that outrage is actually worthless to you. You've actually burnt up energy. I saw people who were depressed. I saw people that it's a bad day. And I was kind of like, I looked at it the same way that I looked at it when those poor little kids were killed in that school by that madman. as a tragic event. Wasn't depressed. I didn't like lose it. I wasn't spirited to protest because I feel that we live in a country of crazy, you know, of, well, we live in a country where most people are good. But with that, we have a certain segment that is evil, hostile, crazy, mentally unbalanced. They're amongst us, and they're going to do some bad things. Unfortunately, it's a part of the human condition, and it will continue to happen. When somebody is, you know, another tragic event that mother in new jersey who was at home with her two children and this beast breaks into her house and beats her senseless she would if he had said sit down she would have sat down and not said a word he didn't have to he chose to so that's one of the reasons i believe that we need to have the right to bear arms and protect ourselves i wish she had a gun and i wish she had shot him in the head this guy is a anybody that does that, I mean, because he was maybe 100 pounds heavier than her, she was a small woman. Any man that does that to a woman, he could have tied her up. He could have did so many, he could have made so many other decisions, but he chose to beat her as if she was a demon of his worst design. People like that, kill him. That's my thought, because if he would do it to her, he'd do it to me. He'll do it to someone else. These people are cancers on society. So I am not of that. We don't need guns. I think people need guns. I think people need to learn how to protect themselves. If you have a gun, you need to go to the range at least every quarter so you know how to use your firearm. 
So that's why I don't have this mindset, oh, we need to get rid of the guns. No, people have to take 100% accountability of themselves and realize that we live in a world of crazy people. So I wasn't depressed. I wasn't going to lose it. I wasn't going to protest. And I've learned to take a deep breath, sit back, and think and not react. And a lot of people I know are reacting. And in two weeks, unless there's more fuel to the fire, no one's going to be talking about it. If that law, that's the thing. Two weeks, three weeks, no one's talking about the massacre that happened in Colorado unless some other trigger event happens to provoke a new conversation. No one's talking about the little kids that were shot. And they won't. So I think this thing will probably go on because uh, there's something about the Department of Adjustments may come in. May or may not. I don't know if it's true. But if this thing stops right here, in a matter of weeks, no one's going to be talking about it. No one. Except the family members and a few people in law. And that's how we respond. We become outraged. We become indignant. And we do nothing with it. So this is how you turn outrage, pain, fuckery into profit. Number one. You feel it. These are valid feelings. You feel how you feel for a reason. There's, these are true, real feelings. Don't deny yourself that. Feel it. I have found out that keeping a journal and actually sorting my thoughts is a tremendous relief valve for those type of thoughts. Feel the thoughts. Own them. They're yours. They're natural. They're real. There's no problem with that. Two, develop a plan of attack. I am feeling some kind of way. I have this energy because understand anger is energy. Outrage is energy. Heartbreak is energy. And these are very, 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 very powerful forms of energy. Many artists, music uh, producers, composers, songwriters produce some of their best work when they're using this energy properly. Gwen Stefani wrote Don't Go when she and Tony Cazale, because I talked about this earlier, because it's very powerful and it's actually relevant to this conversation. She used that pain to write a song that put that group on the map. She became the most successful member of that group because she did not deny her pain. She wrote about it, raw emotion, True emotion. And the thing is, that's why it encapsulated and resonated with so many people because she took real raw emotion and turned it into a powerful channel. People are like, man, they heard the song and it's like, I know how she feels. That people could relate. She didn't just get mad and say, Tony, fuck you. Tony, you broke my heart. Tony, get the fuck out of my life. Those are harmful channels of that energy. She took it, she owned her pain, and she turned it into something beautiful and profitable. Not only did she get an emotional profit, the financial profit was to the tune of millions. So understand, when these things happen, it's a choice on how you're going to respond. It's a choice are you going to take that pain and really do something worthy with it? Or are you going to wallow in it and let that pain subtract from who you are and what you're doing? Because I've learned to, like I said, sit back and be very analytical and to really look at it, to really look at what was going on. Because right now there are people that are trying to turn this thing into, and it is to a degree, it deals with the percepts of race. And if you don't know, I don't really believe in race as it's put out there, because if you study taxonomy, there's only one race, the human race. Look it up. Trust me on that. The percepts of race came about at the same time that slavery were instituted. So it doesn't take much to connect the dots. But if you really look at it, from a tactical point of view, you've got these people who are upset and they're outraged. And here's this Justice Department. This is going on. Yet there's all these other things 
that are more important. They actually impact people that they're not even paying attention to. It's a distraction. It's a part of the grand plan. And if you get sucked in, they win. Whoever they are. Am I a conspiracy theorist? To a degree, yes, I am. I don't think things just happen. I think, you know, and the reason that so many people, myself included, used to turn the matrix is this is the most applicable example of what we're going on. We're in a matrix. And with that matrix, there are people who are controlling it. However, just like the matrix, if you understand the laws of the matrix, you can create your own matrix within the matrix and insulate yourself from the grand matrix. But if you fall rank and file into the doctrine of the matrix, which is to get mad, to get outraged, but do nothing. Because right now there are people who should be working on a project, but they're depressed because of this. Or they should be doing something. They're, they're, I mean, people are seriously had the wind taken out of their sails. And if you have studied this thing analytically from day one, the outcome would not surprise you. It would not surprise you. If you put it in the proper context, it wouldn't surprise you. Here's a state that has had epic snafus on every level from the presidential election to letting a mother kill her child and get away scot-free. If they couldn't convict her, I mean, come on. Understand, look at the total context. Look at where it is. Because I do believe if this had happened somewhere else other than Florida, more than likely Zimmerman would be sitting in a jail cell because it would have been done properly from jump. But understand, when these things happen, and there will be more, there will be grand things in the, in the national level, the global level, that will outrage you. What are you going to do with it? Do something with the energy. One of my things is, is when I see this stuff and like it's a personal practice, I don't watch the news until around 4 p.m. I don't watch the morning news. Actually, it's a show I do watch, but there it's more about low. It's Atlanta today and they talk about more local stuff, new restaurants, things like that. I watch that and I watch the four o'clock news and I rarely watch the 11 o'clock news because at 11. So many bad things have happened. And to use their axiom, if it bleeds, it leads. That's what it is. If you watch the news and did not stuff your mind with other positive things, you would think the world is going to hell in a handbasket, and it's not. For every obscene, crazy, over-the-top bad thing you see, there's probably a thousand good things that happen every day that you never hear about. So you have to educate yourself. You have to read. You have to focus. You have to subscribe to blogs that talk about these things to buffer the influence of the matrix because I want you to ask yourself why am I being fed all of this bad stuff why is it easier that I can go out and eat three times a day for 15 bucks eating crap stuff that has no nutritional value yet if I want a bag of organic true organic apples they're like five six bucks ask yourself why I believe, and this is just me, when you eat this stuff, it dumbs you down. That's why it's so easily available. Because the more you consume, the stupider you become. You lose your ability to think. When you lose your ability to think, you're an easy prey. A man that can think, conceive an ideal, and act upon it is dangerous to the matrix. Because you will figure out a way to create your way and create your life within the matrix. And by God, one day you might influence others to do the same, which robs the matrix of power. The more people who understand what's truly going on and govern themselves accordingly creates an actually a stronger population versus a weak sheeple population. This is why people I don't understand. People don't read. There's been a culture that if you read or you're a nerd, you're, there's something wrong with that. Yet history has shown time and time again that these are the people who actually lead and run the, the world. So it's a lot for you to think about. But the next time that someone does something to you or you're outraged or you're pissed or you feel the need to vent, 
take a moment, take a deep breath, step back and think, this happened. I'm pissed off. I'm outraged. What am I going to do with it? I wrote one poem, and it's not in a book. I may never publish it because I was just totally nuts about this chick. And this was years ago. This was in the 90s. And I wanted her bad. And she said something to me that deeply wounded me. And I didn't do the conventional thing. I didn't just like be real strong and got over it. I went home and I was just so crazy. I wrote this poem and I emailed it to her. And I was like, look, I know what you said, but this is me. And she came over that night. So understand you have a choice on how you respond to this stuff. And sometimes the most organic, the most, When I say organic, the organic choice that's wrapped in something positive, something that's higher than your most basic instinct is frequently the right one. Because I kind of look at what's going on in a different perspective. As I tell you frequently, you have to do something to become something. And something that I realized has happened is all of the YouTube fuckery, the Amazon fuckery, you know, people just coming after me by using the techniques that I'm telling you in this mental Monday is enabled me to smile at some stuff that used to drive me crazy. Last one star review that I got was from, I'm going to assume a guy named Travis because it's so blatant. And I saw it and I cracked up and I called her friend and I said, you got to see this shit right here. The first time I got a one-star review, I was devastated for two weeks. I was like, damn. I mean, I thought about it. I kept looking at it. It's like that scab, you know, that sword. You keep peeling back the scab, and I kept looking at it, and I kept devoting so much energy to something I couldn't change, really. And I was just like, oh, God, oh, God. Now, I have people coming after me on so many different levels, and it's just like, oh. Because I'm not going to tell you that it doesn't hurt or it doesn't disturb me. But I will tell you is I have developed a mechanism and a procedure to channel it into the right direction where I actually become better because of it versus worse because of it, which is the intention of the people who are creating the drama. They're trying to bring you down to their level. They're trying to take you because that's another thing. And this is part of the YouTube fuckery. When a person becomes successful, by the very nature of success, you have progressed. It's progression, which means you're no longer what you used to be or who you used to be. You cannot become successful and remain the same person unless you win the lottery or inherit some money. And that's just one form of success, financial success. But if you become a successful person that changes your thinking, changes your life, you change, which means that. Chances are you losing some friends are pretty good. So on the YouTube thing, people tend to gravitate toward folks that are more like them. The more that it's like, hey, like, you know, free selling. I've been very honest about it. I said, yeah, I'm out the storage auction business. When I first came on YouTube in 2009, I'm out. And this is what I went through. I didn't say I did not try to play anyone. And a lot of people like, well, he's out in his information is not as good and i've looked at it and the thing is the information is still good but people want folks to be on their level because they're easier to handle when someone's on their level they're a mirror of you when someone's above you you don't see a mirror you see deficiencies and once again that's very very hard to deal with Law 36, I believe, is despise what you can't have. And there are many people that practice that law because if you despise it because you can't have it, it can't hurt you in your tender underbelly. I actually ignore that law. The things that I can't have, I have actually learned something else. And, you know, that's actually in the hustler mindset, pimping your mind for success. There's the law of intent. There's the law of action. 
I have learned that there's things that I wanted that I couldn't have, not so because I didn't have the ability, I didn't have the knowledge. I didn't have the right mindset. I didn't have the right perspective. When I gained the knowledge and my mindset changed and my perspective became true, many of those things that I thought were denied to me started walking into my life. A few ran up to me and jumped on me and hugged me. So you don't have to despise what you can't have. If you follow the universal laws, once again, cosmic laws, and use those laws for yourself, you can do so much more. And when you start to gain control of these laws and you start to understand how things work, anger, resentment, jealousy, it melts away because in your mind, you're like, I don't have to be jealous of someone because if I want that, I can have that. You start to cheer on people. You start to get a warm and fuzzy feeling when someone you know is successful because you no longer feel that you can't do it. You know you can do it. So you cheer them on because you're looking at a mirror of success, which is now you. Once you get rid of the inferiority complex and learn how to use the laws that are set forth in the matrix, you can be in stunningly successful. And when I say successful, I'm not talking about just money. I'm talking about relationships. I'm talking about peace of mind. I'm talking about waking up on a Monday morning happy as hell because you're alive. To me, that is success. So understand, take your rage, take your pain, and use it for something profitable. All right, this is Blending Cameron, and this has been another Mental Monday.